Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this group, Pac-Man, uh, Psoriasis, Historic Arthritis, Multicenter Advancement Network. Uh, so um, if I can convince you in a very brief uh, time that psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis um, is is complicated. It's often complicated, particularly um, uh, for the reasons that I'm, I'm going to uh, go through. And uh, and a complicated problem, unfortunately, sometimes has a complicated solution. I'll talk a little bit about the unmet needs and gaps in that space and, and why we believe that a collaborative approach to care is probably the best for patients and also has many benefits uh, for us as well as clinicians. Uh, and then I will dive into what Pac-Man is doing, both from a research standpoint, also a clinical standpoint. Um, the um, <clears throat> I should start by saying that Pac-Man. Yeah, I'm, I'm the first P is silent. You know, Pac-Man, like Pac-Man, but the the Pac-Man without the extra P was already taken. So so here we are, uh, and I'll t and then I'll give you a little bit of where we're headed. So uh, <clears throat> I like this picture. I, this many have probably seen this picture used in, uh, in other, this cartoon used in other uh, ways, but I, yeah, it really does speak a little bit to our siloed approach to care. And I remember when I was um, if, trying to figure out my clinical life um, I, or in medical school, I, I really liked, you know, I liked all of the autoimmune disease stuff. I liked IBD and I liked MS and I liked psoriasis and lupus, and, but there wasn't one specialty that offered all of those things. You kind of had to pick a specialty and then, you know, it, it embrace that disease. And it, it, it's a little bit where we are today, where we have diseases that clearly cross boundaries, um, and the patients would really love for us to be able to cross boundaries, but we are in a sort of a siloed approach, and we take a siloed approach to what we're seeing. So I think all of you know this, and the point of this slide is not to go into this in any great detail, but just to emphasize that the treatment of psoriatic arthritis and psoriasis can be complicated. Uh, we have to think about all the different domains of disease. Is it peripheral arthritis? Is it spine axial disease? Is there enthesitis or inflammation at the site of tendon insertion into bone tendonitis? Um, the dactylitic digit, the so-called sausage digit, what aspects of skin are involved, is there nail involvement? And not all of these respond to the same therapy uh, equally, right? Or in this, uh, anyway, so, so that part is complicated. It's also complicated by the fact that we know there's an increasing list of comorbidities and co-prevalent diseases that are associated with skin psoriasis, whether it be the arthritis and upwards of 30% or more of uh, individuals whether it be co-prevalent IBD, uveitis, or um, metabolic syndrome and its downstream effects. So there's that level of complication. There's this lovely chart, okay, this is an eye chart for the back row, uh, that talks about how we consider each of the different therapeutic, uh, therapeutic classes and medications overlaid with the comorbidity and the fact that they may or may not have skin and or joint disease and which aspect of joint disease. Okay, so that's complicated. Then let's add on top of it that a lot of these therapies require some amount of monitoring, some amount of screening. So we have to be comfortable with up-to-date sort of uh, you know um, vaccination uh, strategies. This is the strategy for uh, Prevnar versus Numavax, for example. So the point of all this is it's complicated. That's what the point of all those slides are, not to go in any more depth. So how do we start to chip away at that? So we have in the room some dermatologists. Any we have derms? Yes, we have any rheumatologists? Fantastic. Any non-derm, non-room? All right. So, so you see, we're re we're well represented. So, um, but yeah. So, so the point being, you know, each of us is variably more comfortable with each aspect of this disease. So, how do we start to learn from each other and 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 come together? And so, uh, you know, one point for the dermatologist, and I always use this figure, is that upwards of forty percent of patients, at least in this one study, who had psoriasis, um, previously didn't know that they had psoriatic arthritis until they were screened uh, actively by a rheumatologist. So, so we're probably missing a whole lot of psoriatic. arthritis. Arthritis. So, in terms of the gaps for the dermatologist, um, we as a group are the frontline providers for psoriasis, and it's us uh, who should really be doing a lot of the psoriatic arthritis screening, right? So, we have, you know, the who is doing the screening, right? I put here who me uh, doing the screening, but which provider? Is it patient directed? Is it the provider that's doing it? What is it that we're screening? Is it actually PSA or is it? more nonspecific than that? Are we just trying to screen for some amount of inflammatory arthritis and referring? Um, when do we do it? How frequently and with what time? So many of us are busy clinicians 
And I know I pack a good 20 patients into a morning clinic or something in dermatology. And you know, when, when would you like me to do this screening, right, is the question that I often get. So how do we get around that? You know, can we do it when the patient is in the waiting room, sitting in the room before they come in? Can an MA do it? Can someone else on the staff do it? Um, you know, why are we doing it? All of these things. And how do we emphasize and how do we incentivize um, in, in clinicians to do this? Um, often PSA can be unfamiliar to the dermatologist. So are we comfortable doing a musculoskeletal joint exam? Are we comfortable with the features of inflammatory disease, with the workup, the testing, the differential? And then uh, the treatment can sometimes be unfamiliar. Um, you know, which, which of these agents that I have for the skin will treat their axial spine disease, for example? Um, so there's a lot here to, uh, to think about. For the rheumatologist, you know, the dermatologic differential diagnosis can sometimes be a bit overwhelming, uh, especially non-plaque psoriasis. I mean, I like to joke that my mother could tell you if, you know, you have a shiny red plaque on your elbow, that it's probably psoriasis. But, you know, when we start to get into the inverse intertriginous disease and some of the pustular disease, it becomes a little bit more tricky, right? Or a patient with cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, our room colleagues may think that looks kind of like psoriasis. And how do I tell it apart, for example? Um, you know, the rheumatologist will often, and in the current era, get patients' joints under fairly good control, but then they have residual skin disease, and it takes, you know, six months to see the dermatologist. So how do we get our patient's uh, skin under control? Are you comfortable using topicals uh, and all of the other things that come up? And then we have a lot of other challenges, including allied health professionals, physician extenders who may or may not be comfortable with this, um, uh, other specialists who are seeing our patients who, with these same conditions, podiatry, orthopedics. So anyway, the list goes on. I won't go through this. So there's lots of gaps. So how do we start to bridge those gaps? And... Many of you may be familiar with the GRAPA group. This is the group for psoriasis or arthritis research. They had KPMG, the auditors from KPMG. There's actually a, uh, uh, they were not uh, using um, their, um, their CPA services here, but instead they have a consulting group that came in and tried to help bridge some of these gaps. And what did they come up with? So when you pay a consultant a lot of money, the first thing you get are fancy, colorful graphics. So that's how you can tell I didn't make this slide, right? Um, so you pay a consultant, you get fancy, colorful graphics. Here you are. Uh, so what did they come up with? So the ways to start to ch chip away at these boundaries are to increase awareness of psoriatic arthritis to have structured educational programs, okay, to promote the use of screening tools, to develop referral pathways and or informal networks, to start to focus on comorbidities, to collaborate care between different specialties, have a multidisciplinary team, and educate patients. So a lot of these points are bridged and the gaps are bridged by thinking about a collaborative approach to care. All right, and so how, so how do we do that? So I'll tell you, one of the ways we've done it locally, and this is what we call um, absolutely, um, uh, you know, uh, no question, selfish um, promo uh, self-promotion here, because right, I'm even in the picture. But um, Durham Room Clinics improve care and research. Durham Room Clinics benefits challenges emerge in their evolution. But so I, I'm going to tell you about our center, and not everyone is in a place where they can have, you know, a real-time center, but I hopefully will make the argument that what we're trying to do with this is just improve local and local regional communication between relevant providers to try to bridge some of these gaps. And we have some examples of where that's been very effective uh, in the D.C. area, in Florida, and a few other places, and we're hoping to facilitate that around the country. So in our clinic, we have myself, another dermatologist, another rheumatologist, one to two room fellows, and four derm residents. We have a handful of students and observers. We have dedicated nursing staff. Uh, all seeing these um, patients at the same time, okay? So you can imagine the patients are absolutely terrified when we come in the room as a big group, right, to do their exam and talk to them. So, uh, but, you know, once they're used to the system, they really do love it, and they come to appreciate some of the value. So for the, the patients, it's one-stop shopping. You know, we have a publication that they have access to a wider array of therapies, that they get, there's a quicker transition to appropriate systemic DMARDs, um, and I don't think I show that data here for time, but we have some of that in, uh, in press. And then uh, the educational academic benefits to us 
uh, are, I think, many. Uh, so for the rheumatology fellows, they absolutely learn the differential diagnosis. They learn how to use topicals. The derm residents have to learn how to do a full joint exam. They report a 66-68 joint count to us. They learn how to do enth uh, enthesial exams. Um, they, uh, so, so by the time they leave, they really have to tell us about duration of morning stiffness, what joints were tender swollen, et cetera. Uh, whether they like it or not, uh, and you know, and I think even if they're not doing that in their future private practice, at least they have that knowledge of what inflammatory versus non-inflammatory arthritis is, and hopefully take it with them uh, into the future. They certainly know how to do screening. We also have a combined uh, program. Vicky, who's going to be speaking also at Penn, has a similar five-year combined medicine dermatology program. And then we have a one-year room derm fellowship where you can cross-train in the specialty. Uh, and patients like this. And this just talks a little bit about the patient's experience uh, and, and uh, essentially how um, it facilitates their diagnosis and, and such. And you can see... Um, Patients uh, who were seen in this clinic had their diagnosis revised 46% of the time and were more likely uh, to be on systemic and biologics than they were if they were not in one of these clinics. Uh, and, and so there's some benefit to patients. So, um, so with that, let me tell you a bit about Pac-Man and I'll shift gears because I know I don't have a lot of time. But um, you know, the idea behind these combined clinics, as I mentioned, there's certainly educational value. Um, but we're, the goal is to screen, diagnose, manage the psoriatic disease patient. Um, to develop uh, academically, to develop, test, and validate um, screening and outcome measures, and, and to do some research as well. So, with all of that, um, the point of all of, of me uh, rapid rapid fire here was to tell you about Pac-Man. And Pac-Man uh, is the Psoriasis, Psoriatic Arthritis Clinics Multicenter Advancement Network. Uh, our mission is to nucleate psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis combined clinics and centers to advance a multi-level approach to psoriasis patients. I'll tell you that. I didn't put it in here, but um, these same clinics, when we did this survey, and this survey is available uh, online, um, it, we actually, something like 80% of the centers also saw dermatomyositis, uh, lupus, scleroderma, so all of the other things you would think would fit well into a derm room collaboration um, are typically seen in these clinics as they are in our clinic. But uh, you know, the idea behind this was really, this was kicked off for psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis. So we're focused on education, and we do offer observerships. And what that means is we support travel uh, and hotel and accommodation to visit any of these centers. And I'll give you the list, and Cleveland Clinic is one of them, uh, where you can go uh, together with your colleague, derm, or room, or practice manager, whoever it is, to go to one of these centers to see how they operate and think about bringing it back home in some, f uh, some form. Um, we support the development of new clinics. We have uh, toolkits that I'll tell you about to explain how to start these. Um, and we also provide things like um, EMR templates that are facing the dermatologist and the rheumatologist that you can use uh, in your practice. We have uh, right now one available for Epic, but we'll have other formats available. And ultimately, our goal is to do research into the effectiveness of these care models. Um, this is the current leadership group uh, and our contact um, and actually from, um, from Cleveland Clinic uh, is uh, Elaine uh, Husney on our steering committee and uh, who's a rheumatologist here uh, and works closely with, um, uh, with Dr. Fernandez as well in, 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 work in uh, seeing these patients. You'll see Cleveland Clinic listed here, but these are some of the centers around North America and now internationally, including Leeds in the UK, and we have a few centers in South America that will hopefully come online as well. Um, <clears throat> we had our annual meeting in New York, and I'll just end by telling you a few of the projects that we're working on. So we're currently looking at uh, patient satisfaction and some outcomes uh, around patients uh, seen in these clinics as compared to those not. Um, we're looking at early diagnosis and screening projects. We're talking about shared data projects among the Pac-Man centers. Um, we have these best practices toolkits, including the EMR templates I mentioned earlier, if anyone's interested. Uh, and, the, and the funded observerships. We received a grant from pa um, Pfizer to uh, start to look at some of the barriers and facilitators of co-management. Um, and ultimately, uh, I can skip this as well in the interest of time, <clears throat> but we are trying to increase psoriatic arthritis screening using this cluster randomized controlled trial where we look at teaching physicians versus teaching the entire practice. And we think one of the most practical ways to increase screening is to have the front staff 
the nurse who's rooming the patient, the you know whoever it may be, actually handing out one of these screening questionnaires that the patient can do on their own. You know, something like a PEST screening or a PACE questionnaire, where if a patient scores three out of five, they're at risk, and you think about referring to a rheumatologist as appropriate. Um, we're working together with uh, National Psoriasis Foundation with this GRAPA Prime group uh, from an educational standpoint. And really, I think the key for the group is we're interested particularly in community outreach. I mean, what we really want are local regional partnerships. I'll tell you, there's one in the D.C. area where a local Durham and a local room got together and started just facilitating patient visits and saying, you know what? Yeah, I keep an extra slot open for your psoriatic arthritis patients and vice versa. Um, they would make sure that they called each other about patients, they would share notes, and eventually it turned into a relationship where now the dermatologist actually drives to the rheumatologist's office once or twice a month, and they see patients physically together in the same place, and that's worked well. Now they're doing some clinical trials together where the outcome measures are including both skin and joint, and so it's become a nice partnership, and that's probably the extreme example, but you know, we've talked about everything from even just having you know, a, a virtual um, a virtual grand rounds in the morning. You know, you have maybe two practices that share a few cases together, show some pictures of their ra of a rash, and 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 talk about you know um, how how it might be relevant to each other, you know, to each other's specialties. So I think there's a lot of ways to think about this.